And so the same way God spoke the universe into existence, our words have the same divine power and impact. That if we say something, we make it happen. <laughs> so be careful what you say, because your words have that impact to make the universe conform to whatever you say. So if you say, I'm rich, you are rich. If you say, I'm healed, you are healed. If you say, I'm healed. important, you are important. In other words, your words dictate your life. And that teaching is very prevalent. Joel Osteen, all of the Word Faith teachers into it. Joyce mm -hmm. Meyer, T.D. Jakes, Greg yeah, Dollar, yeah. <coughs> you name them. Mm -hmm. They've been preaching that for a long time and they're still doing it. And that's called the Word Faith Movement. That our words are able to change the universe. And so it has a metaphysical approach. It's not simply that your words can be very meaningful and that your words can help encourage people or discourage people because we know words have impact. Mm -hmm. You know, we were always taught that sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt you. But we all know that words hurt a whole lot. And then people remember that. You can speak yeah. life to people by what you say, and you can speak death to people by what you say. Yeah. You know, there was a story of this young girl one time that she didn't have a good family life. Uh, from her father or her mother. They always downed her. And so she found herself pregnant one day. She was in line to get an abortion. And while she was in line, she just had a conversation with a perfect stranger. And as they were having the conversation, she was saying, well, you know, obviously I'm not going to be a good mother. He said to her, well, I think you'd be a great mother. And she turned around and got out of line and said, I'm going to have this baby. This man over there thinks I'd be a great mother. <laughs> it just goes to show she had been starved from being affirmed right. so much that a perfect stranger's words were enough to convince her to change her mind on her actions. So words do have impact, don't they? they yeah. Have strong impact and import. But in word faith, they have metaphysical import. In other words you actually have the power to make the universe bend to you. Mm. <laughs> now this is really a form of magic. And if you notice in New Age teaching, it's exactly the same as what Oprah used to call the secret. And you can go and kind of look these things up and listen to it. The <coughs> secret is the New Age non-Christian way of thinking the same thing that Word Faith does in religious circles. Oprah says the reason she knew she would be successful is because she always believed in herself. And that's what made the universe put her in the position she was. And that's exactly the same. Sort of like magic. Sort of like, uh, you know, what I say goes. And that type of thing. So that's Word Faith teaching. But this is part of Postmodernism, the idea of making things happen, the idea mm -hmm. of feeling as though you have the authority to make God do for you what you need to be done. Mm -hmm. Exercising faith, you can avoid poverty, you can avoid sickness, you can avoid tribulation, you can afford all types of things if you have enough faith. And this has been preached in the church throughout. And it has a tremendous impact. But it's part of postmodern thinking and postmodern thought. In fact, I was just listening to a videotape, uh, interestingly enough, just the other day of a young lady who started at the Potter's House. And you know, the Potter's House is uh, Reverend T.D. Jakes, yep. Bishop T.D. Jakes' church in Dallas. Mm -hmm. And she was, uh, the whole video was about why she left the Potter's House. So I was interested in just hearing mm -hmm. what this was about. Right. And this young lady was very articulate, African-American lady, of course, and uh, she was kind of with T.D. Jakes from the beginning, before they got super big. And so she was telling the story about how they were, but she was also at the church during the time of the transition, when the church went from being okay to super big. And then she said everything after that point was about money. Yep. <laughs> and she remembers one time she, she had two vivid occasions that she recalled while she was in church service 
She said once one of the members of the church stood up and he made a comment that the church is being too commercial. And she said before that man could say another word, the security officers is yeah, I bet. the church. Mm -hmm. He was gone. Mm -hmm. But really she talked about the day that she left the church. And she said it was a time when they were going to the altar and it was a prayer time. And she said there was a man in the service who was dressed as a woman and he went down to the altar and he was praying but he was praying audibly so everybody can hear him. Mm -hmm. And his prayer was, oh God, make me a lady. Oh God, make me oh. a lady. She remembers that because it was so startling to hear that. But what startled her more was that the church's actions, reactions to it were mixed. And that type of thing. And so, you know, after the prayer, when everything was over, uh, people were trying to be there uh, comforting the young man or whoever he was and helping him. But she says, T.D. Jake says something that she never forgot. She said, she said that he said, see, the Bible has no answers for all of these problems we're going through today. Wow. <clears throat> So wow. Exactly what he said. She said when he said that, she said, I knew I had to leave right then and there. And she left and never went back. But that's indicative of the mood that behind a lot of people, now a lot of people may not say that, but there are a whole lot of people that believe that. Even in church, even in the clergy, even among ministers, even among missionaries, even among deacons, there are lots of people who do not believe the Bible is the Word of God. Even though they can preach it, they can tell you about it, they can do all of the things that are there. Yep. They do not believe it. And this is part of that postmodern mm -hmm. effect as well. About. That you mm -hmm. have to change the way you think of God in order to justify a new way of thinking and living. And this has become very common because God definitely has his own authority and God has his own rules. Exactly. And God has his own morality. In postmodern mm -hmm. thinking, your morality is evolving. You change how you think people should right. live based upon what's presented you in society. Mm -hmm. So what wasn't good 40 years ago is yeah. now acceptable today. Right. You change according to the way you... And they call that progressive thinking. Okay. Right. So issues that were taboo back in the past, are now embraced. Mm -hmm. Especially when you get into sexual issues. Yeah. Gay issues, you know, homophobia is very uh, much highlighted a lot. Transgender issues. All of those type of things, you see. Those are openly addressed. And so many people know that the trend of the way people are thinking is for them, so they quickly switch sides. Hmm. And they quickly change the way they think of them, and they don't deal with that. They don't rock the boat because there's so many people that are like that, and there's so many people that are in the church that are like that, and there's so many people that support the church that are like that, and they don't want to be unpopular. They want to be able to yeah. draw big, and this is why they don't answer any absolute <coughs> questions. Joel Osteen will never answer any questions absolutely for other people. He will tell you what he believes. But he will never tell you that's what you need to believe. Mm. When Larry King interviewed him many years ago, Larry King said, well, what about atheists? Are they going to heaven? Now, of course, an atheist doesn't believe there is a God. And you know what uh, Joel Osteen's answer was? I don't know. I can't say. That's not his <laughs> job. And he'll do that every time, no matter what it is. And he's not the only one, but he's very apparent with it. But a lot of them fall into it. You know, Bishop Eddie Long and the sex scandal. And when you watch how so many people kind of took sides with him, you know, Carlton Pearson was one of them, and many others, T.D. Jakes and that. And it's, it's one thing to support a person even though they're wrong. But it's another thing to support the wrong. Mm -hmm.